drivers. This is an example of why you're not happy with your pay. That's right, this Uber Eats nice little innocent 275 order. It came in as a 14 minute estimate driving 1.8 miles for the pay of 275. And as you can imagine, like I did, there was no tip with this order. So in this video, the first thing we're gonna look at is, is this little darling order worthwhile in the average market? Next, how is it in California? And then finally wrap it up with the ultimate solution for all drivers dealing with our pay. So let's get started. Hello everybody, my name is Russ and I've been doing food delivery part-time going on almost five years. So I'm your gig economy pro and you can benefit from my experience. That's why I like making videos to help drivers like you improve your ratings and your tips. So in this order, 275, 14 minutes. Let's round that up to 15 minutes just to make it easy. When you do the math, that works out to $11 per hour. Is that something that would excite you? Is this something that you would take in your market? Now, yeah, there's a chance of a tip. And surprise, surprise, I didn't even get a tip when I did this order. I even met the gentleman at the door and I said, oh, thank you, have a great day, and smiled and handed him the food. Sure enough, no tip showed up later on. So in your market, is this something that is worthwhile to you? This is something that you're gonna to have to consider because the gig economy company is not gonna pay us more money. So really we're relying on those customer tips to make it worth our while. We have all those expenses of our vehicle, our time. We're not out for charity, we're trying to earn a living and we pay taxes on our earnings. So there are many expenses and therefore we need to make enough to make it worth our while. So I can't honestly say that I would take this order if I were you. Maybe if it was dead and there was no money, and incidentally, it has been kind of slow, so maybe this would be the ultimate order to take if it's better than making no money. But in general, if you took these kind of orders all day, you're gonna go in the hole and it's really not worth your time. So what do you do? There's one thing you could multi-app, be on different platforms and maybe other orders will come in, do ride share, do Instacart, do different industries, food delivery and grocery deliveries. But ultimately, any order that you get, you can't just take it because they're giving it to you. It has to be worth it for you and your market. And that's a decision that you are fully qualified to decide and deal with those consequences. So next, the second important point, here in California, what did this order actually look like and what lessons can you apply for yourself? Here in California, there's a law called Prop 22. This guarantees the gig economy drivers 120% of minimum wage and now paying 34 cents a mile. And also there's health benefits if you qualify, if you drive enough, but I don't. And so really the money and the mileage applies to me. The important thing to look at here in this screenshot is the customer paid $8.19 to Uber Eats. Of that, $2.75 was my pay. So where did this $5.44 go? it went to Uber Eats. Now, what is Uber Eats gonna do with this money? I've already used this example in a previous video where I took my pay from May Uber Eats this year compared to two years ago. The service fees are going up and what I think they're doing is using this money to pay the Prop 22 money. So in a way, they're charging the customer for our pay, they're giving it partially to us, and then because of the requirements of the law, they're paying us that additional money. So let's break that down now. In my case, I did this order in 11 minutes, not 14. So when you do the math to figure out into hours, that's 0.1833. Minimum wage here in California is 15.50. So 120% of that is 18.60. When you multiply 1860 by that 0.1833, you end up with 341. For the mileage, 1.8 miles times 0.34, that's 61 cents. So when you take in that 341 for my time, 61 cents for my mileage, add that together, that's 402. Take out the 275 that I've already been paid, and this leaves Uber owing me $1.27 for my part of Prop 22 pay. This effectively leaves Uber Eats a total of 
from this order from the customer to fund their company. And this covers their workload, linking the restaurant, the customer, myself to complete this order, also to pay all the employees, their health benefits, stock options, executives pay, etc. But wait, don't think that Uber Eats doesn't charge the restaurant to be on their platform, so they're making money from the restaurant as well. So in my case, let's say it was possible that I could do five of these orders within an hour, 11 minutes times five, that would end up working out to make $20.10 an hour. And that's right in line with Prop 22. So overall, that would be worth it. Here in California, this customer was placing the order. They're already paying for the food. Then you have an 819 service fee. Wouldn't you think that that's good enough? You could assume and really you wouldn't even care because you're already paying for the food and then 819 to get it to your house. I personally would think that's good enough and assume that the driver gets most of that. So really, why would I tip? I'm already paying a ton of money, albeit not in a tip, but overall out of my pocket. That's a lot of money to go to a company so I can eat food. Now, if that driver really surprised me with great customer service, then I would consider tipping. But when times are tight, inflation's high, things are expensive, this 819 fee here in California really may be dissuading customers from wanting to pay any tips to the drivers. What do you think about that? Is that something that's plausible, reasonable? How would you feel? Now, for all drivers in other markets outside of California or any state with this Prop 22 kind of law, Go look and see what the customers are paying to Uber Eats. I really, really trust that they're paying far less than they are here in California. Uber Eats has got to be charging those customers more because by law they're having to pay us more. But in your state, I would really hope that the base pay is higher and the Uber Eats fee is not as high to the customer then maybe the customer feels like they're getting an okay deal and they would be more compelled to tip the driver. I don't know this for sure. You would. So go look at your earnings and click on different orders. See what kind of a, a fee percentage of the order that Uber Eats or other gig economy apps are charging the customer. This would be interesting. Now, years ago before Prop 22, I was very aware of everything. Um, I would not take an order like this because it's absolutely not worth my time. I would move on and do another order. So I wonder how it is for you now that years have gone by in this food delivery industry. I know overall the companies decrease rates to the drivers, but I've been used to Prop 22. You may not have that in your area. So please share in the comments below what these kind of orders are like for you. Do you feel that it's so high priced to the customer that they're like, no way, I've paid enough. I can't even afford a tip to the driver. Surely they're getting most of that fee. Or is the fee really low and the customers are generous and maybe tip you frequently? So please do share that. So the third thing to consider in light of this nice little darling 275 order is what is the ultimate answer? I have an idea. I've already mentioned that the Uber Eats company and the gig app companies charge the restaurant to be on their platform. They also charge the customer a fee to use the platform. And if you haven't paid attention, um, John from Ride Up State, he pointed out rightly, Uber Eats and these other companies, they're charging you, the driver, a fee for you to use their platform. In light of all these fees, what would be fair? What would be something that would motivate the customers to order, the restaurants to participate, and the drivers to want to get to deliver the food? I think things definitely have to change because if all these companies are in competition with each other, DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, Instacart, you name it, Let's not have a race to the bottom to see how cheap we can be and do as little as possible and still make money and be profitable. Racing to the bottom is not a good strategy. Plus, what this is doing is telling the customer that everything is free. All you have to do is place an order in your app and don't even worry about anybody's expenses. It's just going to show up at your door. This isn't realistic to have discounts or plans where everything is free and you pay a small fee. It's better to be upfront and charge the customer exactly a fair profit margin for the company, for the driver, for the restaurant. 
That way, the customer's placing an order, they feel like they're getting value instead of getting in their car, going to the restaurant, ordering it on their own, and either eat there or take it home. They should feel that they're getting a good value by ordering online through Uber Eats or another app. And if the gig economy company is setting the rate properly for the driver, they'll know what motivates us. Instead of trying to get by with as little money as possible, pay us a fair wage that even if we don't get a tip, we're satisfied that we're working and we're earning a fair income. Then tipping would be what it's supposed to be for. Those extreme times when you have really great customer service, not something that you feel forced into because someone's doing something for you. You're paying for a service, you're receiving your food, and that's great. That's all that really the customers should be worried about and the drivers. There's no reason that we should be hounding customers for tips when in reality it's just because we're not making enough from the gig economy company up front. And this is something that they should take action on and seriously consider because drivers like me and like you, we want to be fairly paid for the work that we do. I don't have any proof on this, but I would think that maybe Uber Eats and the other companies are charging really high rates to the restaurants as well. And if they keep doing this, eventually the restaurants are going to go out of business. If margins are so razor thin right now with inflation and all the other challenges just in general, to charge more fees to the restaurant, all that's going to do is pass these fees on to the customer. That's going to make them less likely to order. Then the restaurants go out of business, the gig apps go out of business, and we have to find other jobs. I think right now all the different companies they may be aware of our concerns, but they really don't care because as long as the customers keep ordering, it's best just to kick that can down the road, let someone else pay the bill, let it happen in the future, but right now they're not worried about it. But they should be. If you have a good workforce, if you have good relations with them, the drivers want to work for you. Really, there's no need for such an adversarial relationship. The gig economy company is responsible. They started this service, so let them manage it well. Be fair with the restaurants. Charge them a fair rate. That way they can sell a lot more food. Pay the driver fairly. You set that fee with the customer. That way the customer feels like they're getting a good value. The drivers are happy to bring the food to them. And overall, everybody's happy. When you go to a restaurant, you don't want to leave demoralized. You want to come out of there just feeling wowed and satisfied and happy. Food delivery should be no different, and really any other job in the gig economy. You're, the customer is outsourcing their desire for someone else to do the work, and in exchange, they're paying a fair rate, and they should be happy. All the drivers should be happy, and then really, they'll just be a utopia with everybody. All right. Just kidding. But these are things that the gig economy companies primarily are responsible for. So Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, Instacart, Shipt, Walmart, Spark, Rover, all of you. Think about this and take action on it. So after carefully reflecting on this nice little cute $275 order, I think we can all see there are differences when you deliver in states where there are no Prop 22 laws compared to here and also that the gig economy companies play a key role in structuring everything so that everybody's happy, fully satisfied, and, and the customers feel like they got a great value for their money because they didn't have to go out and cook or drive themselves or any other thing that the gig economy does. So in light of this 275 order and the discussions about the gig economy companies, if you found this helpful, please do like the video and like the channel. Speaking of gig economy companies, have you ever considered why do they contact us with emails, messages? In this video here, I've pondered that same question and sharing some insights with you. So I'll see you there.